all know what 4x4s look like. They're robust, square-jawed, big, and this is one of the biggest, the Range Rover. It's two and a half tons on 20-inch alloys. And this is the smallest one you can buy, the new Fiat Panda 4x4. In comparison to the Rangey, it's like a toy, and just about big enough for real people. Now, you might think that a four-wheel drive Panda is nothing more than a gimmick. It's a glorified ride on lawnmower, more suited to trotting across somebody's wet lawn. But you'd be wrong, because this is a feisty little David, ready to slay off-road Goliaths. In fact, it's spoiling for a fight. According to Fiat, this car can tackle greater changes of slope than the mighty Range Rover. One of the things about four-wheel drives is the fact that they have these enormous overhangs and it really limits their off-road performance. Let me demonstrate with my little baby Range Rover here. See, he's trotting around off-road and everything's cool until he tries to get up a slope from the flat. And if you watch, the front end digs in before the front wheels have a chance to get some purchase and drag him up the slope. Same thing happens if he tries to reverse up. Look, overhang, takes away the wheel's grip, and that's it, you're finished. If you look at the Range Rover, we can see it's going to be a problem because even though it's got trick air suspension and an adjustable ride height, it's got a honking great ass. The Fiat doesn't have either of those hindrances because the wheels are so close to the corners of the car. The short wheelbase also means that you minimise the risk of grounding out when you reach the crest of a peak. And Fiat also claim this car can climb a gradient of 50 degrees. That's five degrees better than the Range Rover. To find out whether the Fiat really can walk the walk, we thought we'd put it to the ultimate test. This is Delabole Slate Quarry, the nearest thing we could find to an asteroid strike. As holes go, it's rather big. Over 400 feet deep, in fact. It's amazing what a few picks, shovels, well, and the old stick of dynamite can do. So which of these two is going to be able to dig their way out first? We'll start each car down here and see which is quickest to the top. First up went the Range Rover to set a benchmark time. It didn't take long to see why it's established itself as the king of off-road, with a low-range gearbox activated at the flick of a switch. Frankly, the overhangs didn't seem to be a problem. It crushes obstacles and sped over the line in just 90 seconds. Time for the Panda. Under £10,000 versus 60. Oh dear. Now, the old Fiat Panda 4x4, you remember that really square one, used to be really popular with the police in the Alps because it went places other cars just couldn't get in order to arrest alpine miscreants. And it's still got that kind of mountain goat vibe. It comes with a 1.2-litre, 60-horsepower petrol engine. And no, that's not the bottom of the range. That is the range. But you can have six airbags, parking sensors, an electric sunroof, climate control and a CD player, just like on the 60 grand Range Rover. This is a real fight between the big boys and the little underdog. But I was a fat kid at school. I know what it means to be the underdog. Come on, Panda! Come on! Normally, the Panda works in front-wheel drive, but if you lose traction, oil heats up in a special differential gearbox. This makes some friction plates expand and rub together, engaging the rear wheels. Et voila! Four-wheel drive. No buttons, no levers, just clever mechanics. Brilliant! The Range Rover might be a bit quieter and a hell of a lot less bouncy. Ooh, but I actually think that the little panda is going to be quicker. Now, mainly because it's just flying around. It's so much more manoeuvrable. Ooh, gosh. But then disaster struck. In the incline that the Range Rover crushed, the Panda was found wanting. Small overhangs or not, the Range Rover's trick four-wheel drive system offers better traction. That last hurdle cost us 10 seconds and victory. But remember, the Panda cost just over nine grand. 
and with its high driving position, nimble handling and roughy tufty personality, the Panda 4x4 is ideal for tackling the potholed, crater-filled surface, otherwise known as your typical inner city road. understeer so far. I'm surprised actually. And it doesn't do what I want it to do. Initial turn in, it's a little lazy, doesn't point very well and it's far too 